Hello everybody. Welcome to Instrumentation Training Channel. In my previous video, I discussed regarding control panel and types of control panels. Link for this is given in the description below. Now, in today's video, I'm going to discuss basics of calibration, which is very important in learning basic instrumentation. Now, we will know what is a calibration mean. Calibration is the comparison of measurement device or an instrument that is device under test. We will call it as DUT against a known with equal or better standard. The standard in a measurement is considered to be more correct of the two and one would calibrate the device under test to know far it deviates from the standard. And do you know why do we need to calibrate? Having instruments that are calibrated ensures quality output products out of tolerance that is OOT instruments tend to give wrong readings resulting in unnecessary back jobs and process failures. Bad or low quality products would pass as good ones resulting in warranty costs and good products as non-conformance to quality ones resulting to unnecessary reworks. So basically calibration is all about producing high quality which is equals to money. Now, there are some important common calibration terms we need to know before working on calibration. We will see by one. The first one is out of tolerance conditions. What does it mean? If the results are outside of the instrument's performance specifications, it is considered an OOT, that is out of tolerance condition and will result in need to adjust the instrument back into specification. And the next one is optimization. Adjusting a measuring instrument to make it more accurate is not part of a typical calibration and is frequently referred to as optimizing or nominalizing an instrument. This is a common misconception. Only reputable and experienced calibration providers should be trusted to make adjustments on critical test equipment. And the next one is as found data. The reading of the instrument before it is adjusted is called as found data. And what is as left data? The reading of the instrument after adjustment or same as found if no adjustment was made. Then we will see the next one that is without data. Most calibration labs charge more to provide the certificate with the data and will offer a no data option. In any case, as found data must be provided for any OOT condition. And the next one is limited calibration. Sometimes certain functions of an instrument may not be needed by the user. It may be more cost effective to have a limited calibration performed. That is, this can even include a reduced accuracy calibration. And the next one is TUR. TUR means test uncertainty ratio. What is this? The ratio of the accuracy of the instrument under test compared to the accuracy of the reference standard. And the next one is ISO 9000 calibration. ISO 9000 calibrations are crucial for many industries. The following is required for ISO 9000 compliant calibrations. In that, the next one is an accredited lab, lab performing the work. What does this mean? The calibration laboratory employed to perform the calibration must be an ISO 9001-2000 accredited lab or be the original equipment manufacturer. And the next one is documented calibration processes. It is critical that a valid calibration procedure must be used based on the manufacturer's recommendations and covering all aspects of the instrument under test. Next one, trained technicians. What does this mean? Proper training must be documented for each discipline involved in performing the calibration. And the next one is traceable assets. The calibration provider must be able to demonstrate an unbroken chain of traceability back to NIST, that is NIST. The next one is proper documentation. All critical aspects of the calibration must be properly documented for the certificate to recognize by an ISO auditor. The next one is a comprehensive equipment list. For any manufacturer to pass an ISO audit regarding calibration, they must demonstrate that they have a comprehensive equipment list with controls in player additions, subtractions, and custodianship of equipment. 
Next one, calibrated and non-CR items properly identified. The equipment list must be identified. Any units that do not require calibration and controls must be in place to ensure that these units are not used in any application that will require calibration. And the next one, a proper recall system. A procedure should be established with the time frames for recall notification, an escalation procedure and provisions for due date extinction. And the next one, equipment custodianship. Responsibilities for ensuring the equipment is returned to the calibration lab should be assigned and delegated. And the last one, an OOT investigation log. Any instrument found out of tolerance requires that an investigation be performed to determine the impact on manufacturing records and reports need to be maintained. That's it. Thanks for watching. We will meet in another interesting basic instrumentation video. Please like, share, subscribe and also don't forget to click on bell icon to receive more interesting instrumentation updates.